Hello friends, so today's video is going to be a list of some series that I completed and continued in 2021. I have done a series and books that I've DNF'd as well as series I started. There's a couple of books on this list that I started and continued, so that's why they're on this list and not a previous one, but I will have those other two videos linked if you're interested in watching. But I always personally just feel so good when I finish a series, especially if I've been really enjoying it and there were some on this list that I greatly enjoyed. There's also some sequels that I picked up that I greatly enjoyed, so I'm very, very excited to chat about a lot of these. Let's just get out of the way the ones that you all have heard me talk a lot about, and <laughs> that would be Flamefall, and then technically The Bone Shard Daughter and The Bone Shard Emperor. I was surprised. I was like, I read both of those last year because it felt like I had to wait so long for The Bone Shard Emperor and then now I have to wait a long time for the next one, which is fine. It's not even actually a long time. But anyway, we'll start with Flamefall. This was the sequel to Fireborn, aka the book that I did not shut up about in, I mean, for a while. I felt like every video I was doing, I was like, have you heard of Fireborn? And it follows two main characters from different classes. It is very much rooted in real history, specifically the Russian Revolution and the way that the author captures how much different forms of government, one, the pros and cons of them, and then two, just how difficult it is to transition from one into the next, and how much it ends up affecting everyone from the top to the bottom. I just really, I, I can't get enough. I think it's such a fantastic political fantasy. And you have these two characters that they come from very different backgrounds, but because of the new form of government, they both have equal opportunity in, a, in some ways. And so two individuals that in the previous form of government would have likely never ever become friends, they are now friends. And it's not even just that they would have never become friends, it's that they probably would have been enemies in the past. And that definitely takes its toll on their friendship, their pasts, they have so much trauma to work through and I think it's done exceptionally well. And then in Flamefall, you see the threats of the old form of government kind of coming back, you get a new perspective. I especially loved the new villainous type of characters, the antagonists. Oh man, did I love to hate these characters. And I cannot wait for the third book to come out because the ending, so much happened. It was so good. Oh man. It was great. Anyway, Bone Shard Daughter, Bone Shard Emperor. So this is a series I started and continued in 2021. I have talked, I've sung this series praises numerous times at this point. I love how it's kind of a genre bender in the first book. And then in the second one, I would say it's more fantasy, but I really liked the way that things were expanded on. I liked the way that the characters' plot lines came together a little bit more. I like the animal companion aspect to it. The magic is super interesting. And then our characters, I really enjoy our characters, especially Jovis. I like Jovis, he's fun. And I like, his animal companion, mythological creature, also very fun. It was, I think the sequel was a fantastic sequel and it also has my heart at the very end. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I really need that third one. It's been pushed back, which is fine. I am not really intending on going super in depth with any of the books I mentioned. I will have other videos linked, however, because we're talking about sequels. I don't want to say too much, but what I can say is I love this series. Everybody should go pick it up. Next up, we have A Vows of Bold and Deadly. This is the third book in the Curse Breaker series, and it was a satisfying conclusion. It was, it was, uh, again, it's, you don't want to say the tone of the ending because that can be spoilery, but I think the way that she tied things together uh, you know, she did. <laughs> she tied them together. The loose ends are now tightened up appropriately. And I still think that the first book was my favorite in this trilogy. I, in some ways, kind of wish the first book had been a standalone. I appreciate what she did with the series as a whole. I strangely think that the second and third books made the trilogy overall feel a little bit younger in tone than it would have if it had just been the first book, even though the first book also is, you know, it's young adult. And so it's a geared toward a younger audience in general. I just felt like I enjoyed the tone of the first one a little bit more because the stakes that were established from books one and two and the way that certain characters are kind of pitted against each other in the final book, 
for me, I was like, are they though? So I just feel like perhaps I wanted things to get a little bit bloodier and higher stakes and more intense than they ultimately did. But I still, I still enjoy this trilogy as a whole. I love Harper and I do really enjoy Bridget Kemmerer's works. I also read Defy the Night this last year and quite liked it. And I'm excited to read more of her works moving forward. After that, we have All the Tides of Fate. So this was a duology and it's a kind of sea-centered duology where you have characters, it's a traveling story where they're trying to accomplish a certain thing and they often have to be on a ship. There's mermaid type characters as well as some other really fun, interesting type of mythological creatures. And the author's ability to write settings and the details of people, the way they dress and culture from one island to the next, that's the part of the story that I really enjoyed. And it takes a lot because descriptions, for me, I'm always like, I wanted to serve the story. And sometimes I think we have so much description that it actually strangely pulls me out of the story. Because if I start to picture something, I'm like, I got it. But in this story, it was like, yeah, tell me more. That sounds really cool. And so I really like the descriptions in the story. And I enjoyed, of course, the characters and their overall arc. And I enjoyed the ending. I can see there being potentially another series in this world in the future. It's not a new favorite. It's not one that hit me really hard, but I did have a good time with it. And I could see myself rereading it someday if I just need to jump into something fun and adventurous. Next up would be The Wolf of Oranyaru and its sequel, The Ikasar Falcon. I only have one book left and I was hoping to complete this trilogy. I did not unfortunately get to that last book, but we follow a woman who, she is a mother and she's also a queen. She has a lot of people kind of snapping at her throat. She has a lot of enemies, sometimes right in front of her, sometimes that she does not see, sometimes she doesn't expect. And one person who should be her greatest ally, she is honestly not sure if they are an ally or if they're an enemy, and that would be her own husband. So they have been separated for a while, and she very frustratingly still needs his help to try and secure power. So she has an opportunity to meet him, meet up with him again, but she doesn't know if it's a trap. She doesn't know if it's really him. She doesn't really know what's going on. And that's the setup for the first one. We follow this character as she is climbing her way back to trying to have a position of power and to keep that position of power. And I just, I really enjoy I really enjoy her clawing her way through the story. I don't honestly know where the third book is going to go, but I've enjoyed both the first two books quite a lot. Next up, we have my, oh man, uh, <laughs> the Winnowing Flame trilogy. So I, I talked a lot about Ninth Rain after I read Ninth Rain, which is the first book in this trilogy. And then I read books two and three basically back to back. And then it was so hard to read anything else after that because I just loved this series. I have talked about it a lot. So I'm sure if you've watched me regularly, you've heard me talk about it, but it follows a few different characters. One of which is kind of this hybrid blend of elf, elves and vampires. And, and then there are humans and then there are witches but the witches are not the kinds of witches you expect. And these characters have so much personality and their world is, there's so much to it. There are wars that constantly plague their planets and have in the past. However, this cycle of war, there's not a whole lot known about it. The only people who really knew much about it were the Aborans, which is what one of our characters, that kind of elven vampire-like race is. However, they've essentially all died out after they started feeding on humans to help them maintain their near immortality. And then that ended up causing a plague. So now those people are basically wiped out, which, you know, humans are like, hey, you were basically eating us, so we don't care. However, they held all the secrets to these mysterious wars. And there's this looming threat throughout the book where you're trying to find out more about the wars from the past. And you're like, is another one coming? And then it goes from there. And it's so good. It's so good. <sighs> The ending ugh, hurt me, but it was great and I loved it. And I want other people to read it, it's so good. Next up we have Wings of Shadow by Nikki Pau Preto. This is the third and final book in the Crown of Feathers trilogy. The main thing that I think really made this series fun for me was the relationship between our main character and her sister. There's a lot to it, a lot more to it than you might initially expect. And her sister, 
might actually be so the older sister she has her hand on everything it seems that the main character try veronica is the main character's name and her sister just has a not healthy way of being there for veronica and it's very controlling and it's very manipulative and it's hard to read at times however this character you get more of them as the series progresses and being in their head and following them i just found them very very fascinating they're very morally gray in a story where a lot of other characters are ultimately good guys and they're doing their best and this one character is like i'm really interesting and kind of bad and you're like oh dang it you are and it just contrasted nicely to the other characters there's a lot of lore in this story there's phoenix riders who are trying to get their homeland back and there's interesting magic and i ultimately quite liked this trilogy i think it's a good one for it's definitely young adult but the lore and how much there is with the history of the kingdoms and the relationships between previous rulers the way that phoenix riders play a role in their society i think there's enough there that it's a good introduction to more epic fantasy but for younger readers and i really enjoyed that next up we have wild card which was the sequel to war cross i had read the kingdom of back by marie lu which is very different from most everything else she has written and then i was wondering from all of you what should i read next and a lot of people said war cross is not the best one to get into because they don't feel like it's her at her best and i'm like well i'll start that one because i want to start from where people don't think it's her best and then work my way up and I actually really enjoyed Wild Cross. And then I read Wild Card and everybody was like, oh, Wild Card as a sequel is just, it's kind of a letdown. And I read Wild Card, I'm like, I liked this one too. I liked the themes that are explored. I think there's a lot of science fiction, some classic sci-fi themes that I really liked what Marie Lu did with them. Marie Lu is just kind of sneakily becoming one of my favorite authors because I picked up a couple other things by her since then. And I always have a good time. I always have a good time. Last on the list was a reread as well as a continuation, which would be Skyward, Starsight, Cytonic, and then the two novellas, Sunreach and Redon. So Skyward is still my favorite overall. And I actually really enjoyed the novellas. I don't know where the fourth book is gonna go, but I, <laughs> I did a whole live show with some friends. So we discussed Cytonic quite in depth over there. I don't want to say too much because we are talking about so far into a series, but I am eager to see how the series wraps up. I just felt that the first book was much smaller scale and the way that the character relationships are developed throughout the story, I absolutely love like the character growth. And then once it starts to get much, much bigger in scope, I, I found myself missing that more intimate feel of the first one. And I think that the last one, we're going to kind of, I'm hoping, based off where things ended up, I think we're going to kind of return to some of what I liked about Skyward while still having these intense high stakes that we've developed in the other two. But I don't know, we'll find out. That's it for some series that I completed and continued in 2021. If you've picked up any of these series, definitely let me know your thoughts. And if you want to chat spoilers, just make sure you write spoilers in your comments so that nobody looks down and has something ruined for them. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.